Hi there, this is Maya from 401 Games. Very nice to meet you. Opening a box of Ixlon today with... So I'm Evie, and I'm very excited to see this set. Pirates, dinosaurs, all sorts of crazy stuff. So let's see what I we get. I was promised by uh, R&D and Magic that there would be some white ramp. Let's see whether or not I can pull some of that White today. ramp? That's sacrilegious. <laughs> all right, so let's see who has the better box. Indeed. Classic boxer. Traditionally, E.B. and I open up a box from a new set, and uh, we just try to figure out what value we can both pull and compete for the, uh, the greatest number, as it were. And uh, one thing to note is that there are no masterpieces in Ixalan, so you're not necessarily looking for you know, any of those uh, like uh, invocations and stuff like that from Amonkhet. But it does mean in general that there's a lot of good value distributed among the rares and mythics themselves. So hopefully that's what we're gonna see. All right, first pack. I've got my first pack. Vraska is now a pirate. <laughs> She's uh, had an interesting career as a Gorgon. All right, let's see here. So we'll, we'll say which rares we have, I think. And so some interesting uncommons. Ooh, I've got my first foil. Ah, I did not get a foil, but what I did get is a flip card. So this is Primal Amulet. And you'll notice here, basically it means that your sorceries and instants cost one less. Then every time you play a sorcery and instant, you put a counter on it. You have four counters and it flips. Flip cards are back, but this time they flip into lands. So this flips into Primal Wellspring. And it says, add one mana of any color to your pool. When that's spent on an instant or sorcery, copy it and choose new targets for the copy. So that's a very nice, powerful card. I ended up getting uh, White is My Wheelhouse. I don't know whether you already picked up on that. <laughs> but um, I ended up getting one of uh, my interesting cards in here. And this actually makes me want to build a life gain deck. Sanguine Sacrament. You gain twice X life put Sanguine Sacrament on the bottom of their owner's library. And it's just two white and an X. And uh, now that there's more abilities to go and just pump X, that life gain is a really real uh, situation. Yeah. And I love the fact that it's an instant. Anytime you can do that sort of thing, end of turn, it's really good. It's fantastic. Okay, so let's continue here. Oh, oh, but oh, I'm you not have finished. A foil. I have uh, a foil, and it's a relevant right. foil. It's a foil <laughs> rare. I actually quite like what they've done with all the colors in this set. Very mm. shiny. This guy has a rainbow on either side of his head. Whenever Emperor's Vanguard deals combat damage to a player, it explores. So explore is a new mechanic. So basically what you're doing is you're flipping off the top of your library. If it's a land, you get to put it into play, and otherwise you put it in your hand and get a plus one, plus one counter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or no, put it into your hand if it's a land, otherwise you put a plus one, plus one, to, and then you put the other card in your it's grave. Either or, yeah. Interesting. And they've really got like a, a big Aztec theme going a lot with the, the humans in this plane, it seems. With my name being Maya, I'm okay with that. <laughs> All right, let's see here. So, as far as my rare, ooh, look at this, mm. a big bad dinosaur. Ooh, look at it go. So that is the uh, dinosaur legend from the set. His name is Gishath. And you can see here that they're Naya. Most dinosaurs will fall into some Naya colors. And uh, he allows you to play more dinosaurs when he hits. He's got Trample, Vigilance, Haste. When he deals combat damage, you reveal that many cards from the top of your library and put any number of dinosaurs onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom. That is strong. Dino tribal lord. Indeed. Alrighty. So I have indeed here a legendary enchantment, the search for Azcanta. I think I'm saying it right. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may put it into the graveyard. Then, if you have seven or more cards in your graveyard, you may transform the search for Azcanta into as Kanta, the Sunken Ruins, which is again a blue land. And then the secondary ability is uh, being able to look at the top four cards in my library. And uh, you can reveal a non-artifact, non-land card from amongst them and uh, put it into my hand. So very blue, very, very blue mechanic. For a two cost and blue though, not bad. I love these things too, because when they flip, it, it's a land that can then tap for mana. So even though it has that special ability, you're also somewhat accelerating off of not too expensive uh, an enchantment. Okay. 
So, skipping through the comments. I'm sure there's a bunch of interesting comments here, but you guys don't want to see that, do you? All right, some uncommons. And oh, look, another dinosaur for me. Rickjaw Raptor. And uh, this is another one that uh, illustrates a mechanic that dinosaurs have called Enrage. So this says, whenever it's dealt damage, you draw a card. So whether that's four damage or one damage, and then you deal one damage, one damage, one damage, you would draw a card for each of those. So very, very powerful. So uh, when Return to Ravnica got released, uh, there was a card called Cyclonic Rift, and I love the bouncy bouncy. So here's another uh, rare out of this set that uh. focuses on a similar mechanic of bouncy bouncy. Return all non-land permanents target player controls to their owner's hand. That's very vicious, considering that you can only have seven cards in your hand at a time. So if your board is full, <laughs> that person could have a very bad day. And uh, now that we have uh, more opportunities for tokens, obviously those fizzle when they go into your hand. So this actually, for a six mana cost, it might seem expensive, but what it does, it does well. Yeah, that's something that I would probably put into my uh, my mono blue wizard commander. <laughs> definitely something <clears throat> that would fit there, I think. It, it would definitely put more of a dampener <laughs> on my Kalia than the last time we faced yeah. off, I will admit. Especially anything that can reduce the cost of sorceries in instant like that makes that card way better. Mm -mm, absolutely. Um, all right, I've got here a Rowdy Crew. So this is an interesting one. Uh, the set's full of pirates, so you'll notice that. And uh, this is a four, or rather a three, three for four, has trample. And when it enters the battlefield, you draw three cards, then you discard two cards at random. If the two cards share a type, then you put two plus one plus one counters on Rowdy Crew. Mm -hmm. And you got the first mythic. I first, did. first mythic. Oh yeah, it is mythic. <laughs> so congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I actually run Merfolk in uh, Modern. So there's been some interesting cards and suggestions that might augment my deck. But here is uh, a Merfolk right now. Uh, rare, creatures you control with a 1-1 counter on them can't be blocked. Counters are back. Or counters are a continuation, I would say. Mm -hmm. And uh, Merfolk generally have them. But I've again gotten a rare foil. What? And I know, I'm the best. <laughs> and uh, it's actually, again, a wonderful example of the art in this set. Uh, we have Spell Swindle. Counter target spell. Create X colorless treasure artifact tokens where X is that spell's converted mana cost. They have tap and, of course, sacrifice the artifact. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. That's where... Uh, you know, when you're starting to crap out a whole bunch of treasure artifacts, that's where this comes in handy. And you bounce all their stuff, And you too. bounce all the stuffs. So that would be a good response. Treasures are one. interesting. That's another theme in the set where you'll find a bunch of different cards that make them. Um, oh, yeah. Ever since I saw them for the first time, I was like, oh, these are just Lotus Petals. Some of you may be familiar with that card. And I was like, why didn't they just call them Petal Tokens or something like that? But... I get it, it's treasure, it's pirates, and stuff like that, so thematically it's better this way. I do love the art on the treasure tokens. It does look very appropriately yeah. treasure-like. Very cool looking. Okay, so for my next pack here, I have Drowned Catacomb. A very familiar card. These are the, uh, the M10 duels, as some of us call them. Basically, you uh, comes into play tapped unless you control a swamp or an island, and then there's the the set of five of the uh, allied color ones. So yeah, Drowned Catacomb, nothing exciting, but nice to have in standard, something that you can use to color fix. Well, they'll never see me coming. Daring Saboteur. Two and a colorless, Daring Saboteur cannot be blocked this turn. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. And if you do, discard. But for a two one body with a two cost, that's pretty spicy. I quite like that mechanic. Yeah, I guess it's the, the new looter of this set. It is indeed. And uh, may I just also say that I am so excited for white vampires. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, white With vampires lifelink. are definitely a thing. Well, lifelink. Is, I'm all about that lifelink. All right, so let's see what I've got in this pack here. Skipping through commons and uncommons. I've got Priest of the Wakening Sun. So here's basically a, uh, a creature that's allied with the dinosaurs. So it costs one white, it's a 1-1, one, one, and it says, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may reveal a dinosaur card from your hand if you do gain two life. And I have five, Sacrifice Wakening Sun, and search for a dinosaur, put it into my hand, and shuffle. So basically, five tap sack it, and you've got yourself a tutor for a dinosaur. I seem to be getting all the enchantments, and that's okay, because I quite like enchantments. I own things like Replenish, so 
Uh, I've got a Shaper's Sanctuary as my rare. Whenever a creature you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. As if green needed any more advantages when it comes to its creatures. <laughs> and this is a one-cost enchantment that's bonkers. I quite like that That's as well. a very good card. I that's think that one's going to start good. showing up places. Yep, and the I other like interesting thing, too, is with this set, merfolk are blue-green. Yes. So there could be a blue-green deck where you're you know, putting yep. out tons of merfolk, and you yep. put that out, and you draw if they ever try to start killing them. You know what? But in that uh, the Commander's Anthology that released, I would put this in the Freilis if I was augmenting that deck. Oh, yeah. 100% I'd put that in Freilis. It would work with anything where you have a ton of uh, creatures like it's that. It's true. Too. It's true. Uh, and may I say that I got another foil. <clears throat> another foil. <laughs> you know what? So Direct. far, I have not opened one foil. Well, I mean, they're in there somewhere, I'm so, sure so, of it. Somewhere. But, oh, just as I say that, I open a rare foil. All right. Well, let's see it, man. Let's see so, it. So, uh, non-rare foil, I got Angrath's Marauders. So, seven for a 4-4. Four, four. If a source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double instead. So nice 4-4 four, four damage doubler dude. And then I got Foil Rare, Settle the Wreckage. It's an instant, and it says, Exile all attacking creatures target player controls. That player may search his or her library for that many basic land cards, put those into play tapped, and then shuffle up. So it's kind of like a path to exile for all attackers. Very interesting. All right, I'm just going to take that away, because we need to make way for the Abril Beckett Brass. <laughs> So here we have our human pirate, pirate lord, other pirates you control get 1-1. One, one. And at the beginning of your end step, you gain control of a target non-land permanent, uh, controlled by a player who was dealt combat damage by three or more pirates this turn. And I do believe there were pirates in uh, Aether Revolt, weren't there? Yeah, there Yes, are. absolutely. So you, you're not exactly strapped for pirates if you want to play that as a tribal in standard. Yeah, it seems like they were, uh, you know, prepping ahead of time for it kind of thing. Definitely. And I'm seeing with all the counters coming out, uh, I'm thinking that Atraxa is going to get a bit of a boost too for those who like playing Atraxa as a creature-based counter mechanic. Oh, yeah, yeah. So let's see here. A bunch of commons, uncommons. And my rare is Waker of the Wild. So this is a 3-3 three, three for 4. It's a merfolk shaman that's green. Uh, X, green, green, put X plus one plus one counters on target land. It's now a zero, zero elemental. It is still a land. Again, the merfolks just seem to keep finding me because, of course, they want to come home. Uh, I have indeed Kopala, Warden of Waves. Spells your opponents cast that target a merfolk you control cost two more to cast, and abilities your opponents have that uh, target a merfolk also cost two more to activate. Now, that actually is something that I might consider playing with in my modern merfolk. Mm -hmm. I don't think I want to splash green, but that might be spicy enough. This would enough. make sense. Even just as a sideboard card, when yep. you know that there's a deck that's constantly targeting things, you know, with lots of removal or fatal pushes and all that stuff. And, like, you need your lords on the field in order to push through for the win. So yeah. this is another way of making sure they stay to do that extra damage and are a little bit more sticky. Sort of like the bigger curse catcher, almost. Uh, sort of, not not quite a curse catcher, but but yeah, it gives it that almost like uh, frost titan ability is usually how I think yeah. about it too. But that that should definitely be good for for merfolk. And let's see more Ypsilan. I've been uh, completely annoying my coworkers with the uh, calling this set Ixalan, <laughs> and I've been told not to do that anymore. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes! All right, cool. All right, what you get, what you get? I, I've got the Star of Extinction. Very Destroy nice. target land. I love land destruction. I know that doesn't make me popular as a commander player, but I don't <laughs> care. Uh, so Star of Extinction deals 20 damage to each creature in each planeswalker. Nuke the field. Done. And that's very flavorful. I mean, you can see by the art what they're hinting yeah. at, right? Dinosaurs going extinct because of the meteor. Just completely boom, boom. And another interesting thing about this is let's say you had a Boros Reckoner. That deals damage equal to what it takes to target yep. player. So if you had a Boris Reckoner out and you go Star of Extinction, you deal 20 damage to a player. Delicious. My rare is an Orc Pirate, Ruin Raider. So it costs three for a 3-2. And he says, Raid, at the beginning of your end step, if you attacked with a creature this turn, reveal the top card of your library and put that into your hand, you lose life equal to its converted mana cost. So it's kind of like you get a, a Dark Confidant at the end of turn if you attacked. Okay, okay, okay. 
So that makes very much uh, sense for another pirate. Yeah, for so especially like an orc like this sort of thing. Yes! All right, so I'm very pleased. I keep getting lords. I keep getting foils. I'm okay <laughs> with this. this. This set made me very happy because I'm tribal focused. So here we've got, um, Ma I always called him Marvin. Wow, Mavrin Fane, Dusk Apostle. He's uh, the legendary vampire white cleric. And uh, whenever one or more non-token vampires you control attack, create a 1-1 one, one white vampire creature token with lifelink. I like it. I like it a lot. For a three body, 2-2, two, two, sorry, for a three cost, 2-2, two, two, and then to just to spit out games. little weeny vampires with lifelink, I'm about it. Yeah, that's very efficient. And I have a Shaper's Sanctuary, the same card you saw before. Whenever a creature is targeted, you can draw a card. Very nice. Again, I'm just gonna highlight this land art for a moment because it's it's so good and oh, painterly. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really pretty. And you can definitely see how they're going with that kind of Central American reference, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's Aztec or Mayan and stuff, I don't really know. I mean, it's Ixalan, I guess. Yeah. But very very cool looking. I don't think they've had that aesthetic before, where something looks like you know Aztec or Mayan or. No, they definitely haven't. I haven't come across anything like that, at least. All right. Well. Oh, another thing I was going to point out as well is, as an uncommon, these are pretty cool. Unclaimed territory. Mm. A lot of people are comparing this to um, Cavern of Souls because it says when it comes into play, choose a type, creature type, and you can tap for colorless for anything, or you can tap to add one mana of any color to spend only on that type of creature. And that's an uncommon, so that compares very well to uh, Cavern of Souls. Alrighty, so for myself, uh, I just want to highlight here the rare. Growing rights of it, Itlamok. 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 All right. And uh, when it comes into the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand, as if green needs more of that. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order and at the beginning of your end step. If you control uh, four or more creatures, then transform. Drum roll into... Greenland ramp, add a forest, add a forest to your mana pool for each creature you control, but that's busted! So you basically got yourself a Gaia's Cradle, except it's technically even better because it'll still tap for green regardless of the creatures you have, or tap for green equal to creatures you have. So I think that's one of those chase cards from the set. That's definitely a value card there. It's at least 20 bucks, I think. Yeah, well, I don't play green, so it's worthless to me. <laughs> Let's just throw it out. So here I have a flip card as well. This is Dowsing Dagger. So two colorless. It says here it's an equipment. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent creates two zero two plants with defender. The equipped creature gets plus two plus one. Equip is two. Uh, whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, then you flip Dowsing Dagger. So it's kind of weird because it gives them little blockers, but the condition is to flip. But if you do flip, some of you may recognize a land like this. Lost Veil. This is very much like Lotus Veil. Tap to add three mana of any one color to your pool. Not bad at all. So if you're ever able to play this card and get it to flip, you know, quickly enough, you've accelerated by three, which is quite a bit. That's, that's actually very sufficient. All right. So once again, we've got ourselves another tribal uh, player here. Captain Lannery Storm. And she's just living it up, bringing her that horizon. Haste. Whenever Captain Lannery Storm attacks, create a colorless treasure artifact token with, of course, tap to add any color of mana to your pool once you've sacrificed it. And uh, whenever you sacrifice a, tre a treasure, Captain Lannery Storm gets plus one plus zero until the end of turn. So you could just pop off all of your treasures, make her a big fatty boom boom when she comes onto the field and smack someone upside the head. I'm about that. I got this Settle the Wreckage, same as the foil I got before, where you can exile attackers and they search for basic lands. But, oh, I've got a bunch of this box to go through. Let's burn through these. Yo, burning is... I'm about it. I'm about it. All right, so... I swear to God that some of the lands uh, art looks a lot like um, Lorwyn. They do. All those colors, exactly. I got a Captivating Crew. So Captivating Crew is four for a four-three, and then you can pay four to gain control of a creature until end of turn. 
I've got a Sanctum Seeker. We've got that Vampire Knight, traditionally black, and uh, whenever a vampire you control attacks, each opponent loses one life and you gain a life. Ooh. Yes, my friend, Sanguine Bomb that. <laughs> Okay, so I've got ooh, so I got a foil water trap weaver. So two two merfolk. When it enters the battlefield, tap a creature an opponent's controls, and then it doesn't untap. It's a nice foil, and I have a legion's landing. Oh gosh darn it! One white for a one one. Life I wanted Laker. to open that one. Uh, it's a legendary enchantment, but if you attack with three creatures, then you get to flip it, kind of like Windbrisk Heights. When it flips, it taps for a white as a land. This is a Danto the First Fort. But you can also pay two and a white to tap and create a 1-1 lifelinking vampire. So very efficiently costed at one, and then flipping into something that makes 1-1 dudes. That white ramp doll. Right? That's the white ramp they made that for you? That is the white ramp that they were referring to. <laughs> it wasn't exactly as spicy as I wanted, but I will take what I can get. Um, I've got the Sorcerer's Spyglass. So basically you get to make somebody, one of the cards in somebody's hand a dead card. Uh, as Sorcerer's Spyglass enters the battlefield, look at an opponent's hand, choose any card name, and then your activated abilities or of uh, sources with the chosen name can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. So that includes for anything else in their deck. So if you went and named, say for example, this one until it flips, it's a dead card. Neat. Yeah. I like that. It's the uh, reminds you of kind of like a pithing needle effect or a Phyrexian revoker type of effect. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen enough hate effects in Magic recently. Yeah, well, they're getting there. Oh, oh, I got a spell swindle. So that's the one, the counter spell that makes all the treasures. Yes, indeed, but is it foil? It is not foil. Well, <laughs> that's okay, because I got a different foil. Oh, okay. All right, so I'll start with the less exciting card, but it is really nice in foil. We got Jack Skellington just coming out of there, or rather not Jack Skellington, Jack uh, Sparrow now is a Skellington. <laughs> uh, March of the Drowned. And then we have uh, a dinosaur. We've got Death Gorger Scavenger. And uh, exile target card from a graveyard. If uh, the card's exiled this way, you gain two life. So life gain in green. And if a card's exiled this way, uh, it gets a 1-1 one, one until end of turn. Hmm. Pump and exile. Pump, exile, life gain. Cool. Oh, if you exile if, a creature, if you, you get the two creature. life. If it's yep. a non-creature, you get the plus one plus one. Yep, yep. Nice. All right, on to my next pack here. I have... Glacial Fortress. So again, something most people are very familiar with, the M10 duels. This one's the blue-white. I'm into the new art for all of those, because that needed a bit of an update. Yeah, they did. Uh, I will definitely say that Wanted Scoundrels, these guys look very wanted in their foily fashions. But I also have uh, a multicolored Hostage oh, Taker Human Pirate. Yes, I quite like him. When Hostage Taker enters the battlefield, exile target artifact uh, or creature uh, until it leaves the battlefield. You may, however, cast that card for as long as it remains exiled, and you uh, may spend mana as though it were mana of any type to cast that spell. So you can basically use it as a translation mechanism if you are finding yourself mana strapped. Very cool. That's a nice flavorful pirate. Ah, oh, Sun Petal Grove. Eh, again, kind of boring. Same sort of thing, green-white this time, but with uh, with some more new art. Sell those cards. <laughs> kind of boring. Sell those cards. Settle the wreckage. It's an instant. Exile all attacking creatures. Uh, target player controls. That player may search their library for that many basic land cards. Put those cards onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle his or her library. I like you know white that's going and uh, choosing, pe having people choose what they're doing and taking things away from them. Okay, I quite like it. So I have here Search for Azkanta. Azkanta! So we saw Maya open this one. This is the one where basically you can uh, scry one at the beginning of your upkeep essentially. Or no, it goes to the graveyard. And then if you have seven or more cards, you flip it. And then that's kind of like the intuition for three for non-land, non-creatures. That's terrifying, the face that she's making right there. Dream Caller Siren. Flash, flying, can block only creatures with flying, but with flash flying on a 3-3 stick, I'm mm -hmm. okay with that. And then when it uh, enters the battlefield, if you control another pirate, tap up to two target non-land permanents. That's really that's actually, actually quite value. Yeah. I would argue that that's almost, almost, almost on par with uh, I'm Batman. 
What is this? That Vampire Nighthawk. Vampire Nighthawk? Well, he costs three, which is why he's so good. But yeah, but he this does... This does a lot. This reminds me of... Um, what's that? Uh, Dungeon Geists, almost. They were four for a three, three. They didn't have flash, though. Which That's definitely true. gives that kind of an edge. Yeah, I do like that a lot, actually. It seems like they, they gave it like an extra ability on top of what it could have been. All right, so I have Verdant Sun's Avatar, giant green dinosaur. Whenever a creature comes into play, or is it only dinosaurs? Whenever this or another creature enters the battlefield, you gain life equal to its toughness. So big time life gain type of thing. Alrighty, and you thought that you'd seen the last of uh, vehicles after Kaladesh and Aetherbolt? Not so, my friends. Here we have our Fell flagship. It's a vehicle as well. Pirates you control get an automatic plus one, plus zero. And uh, whenever it deals combat, this particular vehicle deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card, Crew 3. Not bad, considering that no. some of the pirates you want to keep on the field to maintain their cumulative effects. Yeah, I mean, essentially having something like that that's an anthem for a card, for a card type, as well as being a creature that then has relevance later. Not Plus bad. the uh, flavor in a flagship. Yeah, exactly. Like, right? they're, they're going on a pirate <laughs> ship. It's like, it's great. The raiding party. All right, so I have opened Ashes of the Aberrant. So it's an enchantment for two. Players can't cast spells from their graveyards or activate abilities in cards, uh, abilities of cards in graveyards. And when a creature dies, you gain a life. Nice, I like that. All right, let me just replace this. I got myself another foily water tab weaver. I do like the uh, merfolk in the foils. And then I've also got another vehicle, a Ooh. conqueror's galleon. When the galleon attacks, uh, exile at the uh, exile it at the end of combat, then return it to the battlefield uh, transformed under your control. What does it transform into, ladies and gentlemen? We have Conqueror's Foothold. It's a land. It add wastes. It allows you to draw a card, then discard a card for two. And then for four, you can just draw a card straight up. And then for six, return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Recursion? Drawing? <laughs> cycling? It does a whole bunch of stuff. It reminds Anna. me of like uh, either a trading post or a staff of domination, that sort of thing. But you with have a less whole goats. Bunch of Less goats on it, though. It's true. It's true. And Sadness. for my pack here now, I have Fleet Swallower. 6-6, six, six, giant fish for 7. Whenever it attacks, target player puts the top half of his or her library rounded up into their graveyard. It's a traumatizing fish. A traumatizing fish. I mean, isn't that what Ahab encountered? <laughs> I guess so. All right. I've got... Uh... I've got myself the first pl Planeswalker. Ooh, Planeswalker number planeswalker one. Planeswalker number one. We've got the warrior poet Huatli. Huatli? Huatli. Huatli wow. is her Hwa name? Huatli. I like that. Uh, you, you, you just, like, you know, you gain life equal to the greatest power of creatures that you control. You create green dinosaurs. And then uh, finally, she does X damage divided as you choose amongst any number of target creatures. Uh, creatures dealt damage this way cannot block this turn. Oh. Yes! I don't she know has it. really nice art. I love the oh, way that God, card yes. looks. Absolutely gorgeous. And I believe that fan headed dinosaur is on the back of the sleeves yeah. as well. Yes. Really spice. Now I have here Tishana, Voice of Thunder. Uh, five green blue, star star, power and toughness equal to the number of cards in your hand. You have no maximum hand size. And when she enters the battlefield, draw a card for each creature you control. So I'm tired of seeing this card only because we've seen it like two other times. <laughs> but I'm going to swindle your spells, fool. So many spell swindles. It's not a bad card at all. It's not I just bad. It does cost five foils. mana, so it's not quite constructed material, I think. Maybe there will be a, something in standard that uses it, but at five mana for a counter spell, it's a little bit loose. Commander will use it. Commander for sure. Commander will, will use like it. Like a confiscate. Up and down and side to that side. type of level. So I have here a Fathom Fleet Captain. One in a black, two one menace. Whenever it attacks, if you control another non-token pirate, pay two colorless. If you do, you make a two two black menacing pirate. So here we've got uh, a dinosaur for stacks effects uh, decks in the sense of uh, it's a flyer for a three and a two three body. Creatures your opponents uh, control uh, enter the battlefield tapped. Ooh. So uh, that basically means that um, they, they, they can't immediately go and use their abilities. It's, it's definitely a thing. Okay. Okay. 
So looking at my next pack here, go through a bunch of commons. That's basically what we do all day, is go through a bunch <laughs> of commons, find the yeah. spice. When a new set comes out, we have so much sorting to do. Oh my god, all the oh, sorting. Oh, you know what? I got a fell flagship. It's that same one that you had, Pirates Get Plus One Plus O. Oh, and uh, it's a 3-3. Three, three. It's Crew 3, though, so you have to have at least 3 power. But, again, very cool rare. I love the perspective on this particular card for uh, Verdant Sun's avatar oh, right yeah. there. Yeah, very the cool. Life Gain Dinosaur. Life Gain Dinosaur. Very, uh, very cool to see dinosaurs. Before, you know, I had staff members trying to create tribal out of things that looked like di dinosaurs but weren't exactly creature type. It's nice to see that, uh, you know, we have a there's new... some real ones. There's some real, quote unquote, you real ones. You know what, Maya, though? I noticed this when I was on Gatherer the other day. Mm. It seems like a whole bunch of cards that were previously lizards or beasts... Oh, did they get have now been Yeah, they've been errated to become dinosaurs. So I was looking and I was like, oh, there's only Pygmy Allosaurus that's a dinosaur. Yeah. But then I went and checked and I was like, oh, these are all dinosaurs now. Even Fungosaur is a dinosaur ah. from way back in the past. What about Allosaurus Rider? Is that still an elf? That's an elf. That's still an because elf? It because it's a to rider, the elf. Yeah. not the Allosaurus. Exactly. All right. Ooh, now I have here Entrancing Melody as a rare in this pack. It's two blue and X. Gain control of target creature with casting cost no more than X. Or casting cost equal to X. Excellent, excellent. All right. So we have here... Uh, the contempt of Vraska, Vraska's contempt. Oh. Exile, target creature to, or uh, planeswalker, and you gain two life. Instant for a four black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm about that. But uh, I love the uh, quote on it. Uh, it wasn't long before the taverns of high and dry were full of whispers about the new captain who could turn a person to stone with a single <laughs> glance. Well, yeah, that generally would cause a community to talk, uh, I would say. Yeah. Oh, I got my own Growing Rites of Itlamok. There That's it the is. One that turns into the guy's cradle style land. So very happy about that. That gives me a boost in value from this box over here. What is with your eyes, fellow? He has been arcane adapted. The arcane adaptation. So it's an enchantment, and when it enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type, so it can only focus on one. Creatures you control at the, uh, uh, of the chosen type in addition to their... Oh, creatures you control are the chosen type in addition to their other types. The same is uh, true for creature spells you control and uh, creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. So ah, it's a way of translating tribe. It makes everything tribe. into yeah. that tribe. Yeah. Okay, so you can sense. get some mutual benefits off of things like that ship. Now I have here... A Regisaur Alpha. So five mana, four, four. Other dinos have haste. And when it comes into play, make a three, three dinosaur with trample. Now that's nice. I can definitely get behind uh, yeah. more trampling dinosaurs. I, I think they all of a certain size should because have trample. Because dinosaurs are, are kind of a new uh, tribe, I suppose you could say. It's nice when you see lords like that, that you know really make them worthwhile. So X does mark the spot. I know Indiana Jones tried to go and refute that in the third <laughs> you know, movie, but no, it does X mark the spot. Uh, you have one tap, scry one, put a landmark counter on the treasure map. Then if there are three or more landmark counters on it, Atraxa, um, remove those counters, transform the treasure map, and uh, create three colorless treasure artifacts with the sames. And then you have add waste, sacrifice a treasure, draw a card. Oh, yeah, it turns the treasures friend. into drawing cards, it, not just the mana thing. Uh, I think you actually get both. No, because this one says here, tap, sack a treasure, draw a card. So it would only be for the one purpose. Because if you tap and sack the treasure for the land or for the mana, you wouldn't. It would only be one or the other. Oh, I see, I see, But I it see. turns, it gives them both it, capabilities if you chose it. Yeah. My rare here is Tokatli Honor Guard. And it just says one in a white, one three, creatures entering the battlefield do not cause abilities to trigger. So it's kind of like a hate bear. Yeah. I no like triggering. It. No triggering. So triggering. All right. So here we have our uh, rare here. It's Entrancing Melody. So again, gain control of target creatures with the converted cost of X. Uh -huh. I do believe in your wizard deck that would be a little bit detrimental to me. Mm. It wouldn't be too bad. In, in that deck, because obviously in Commander you can play so many different things, I have like control magic and stuff. So I don't know. I guess this is... Because if I pay three, I'm getting a creature that's a one drop. And if I pay four, I'm getting a two drop. Mm. 
I'd steal, rather just steal play my Kalia. magic. St- steal yeah. my Kalia. That's true. She's cheap enough that that can happen. Like that that's what I mean, is that that could cheap enough commander? It's yours now. Here's an interesting card. Very basic, but very powerful. Seven mana. Target player draws seven cards. Straight up. Just like that. A mana per card. Mana per card. Somebody was asking me the other day, they were like, oh, this is a mythic. Why is that a mythic? And I was like, you know what? It is a very kind of bland card, but one card drawing you seven cards is extremely powerful. I don't think they could make it anything less than a mythic. No, and I don't think they could make it cost anything less than seven. Than seven, oh, for Because, sure. like, I mean, come on. You can already have ways of pumping colorless mana into there and cheating that out for a little bit cheaper. Yep. Now, I seem to be uh, having all the Planeswalkers today. Oh, my goodness. Yes, okay. indeed. Let's so, foils see. and Planeswalkers, that's where I'm at today. We've got Jace, the cunning castaway. Jace, Jace, Jace. Yes, indeed. Jace, Jace, Jace. Jace tribal. <laughs> Whenever one or more creatures you control deals combat damage to a player, this turn draw a card, then discard a card. So you get to cycle for his plus one. And then for his uh, minus two, create t- a 2-2 two, two blue uh, illusion token. With this creature becomes the target of a spell, sacrifice it obviously because it's an illusion. And his ultimate is create two tokens that are copies of Jace, the cunning castaway, except that they're not legendary. So you just get to abuse his mechanics <laughs> as much as humanly possible. That's got to be the weirdest uh, ultimate on a planeswalker I've seen, where it makes copies of the planeswalker. <laughs> Now I have here rampaging, or sorry, repeating barrage, and this is a sorcery, three damage to target creature or player, and then raid if you attack this turn, pay three red red, return it from your uh, graveyard to your hand. So it, it definitely reminds me of like a hammer of Bogarden, but meh, I don't know if I like it more. That just seems kind of like a meh card to me. Alrighty, so I, I'm not sure what paint factory this goring <laughs> <laughs> Ceratops has found itself, exploded paint factory has found itself in, but it does have double strike, and uh, whenever it attacks other creatures you control also gain double strike until end of turn. So for a beat your face deck, yeah. I like it. Yep, yeah, would mesh very well with red. Because if you can get all of your team with double strike, usually that should be enough to win a game. Yeah, even if it doesn't have trample or have unblockable, you're going to smash so much face. Now, I also have a treasure map. This is the one that flips into the one that allows you to sacrifice treasures for drawing a card instead of just for mana. I swear, if I was opening this box just, you know, for funsies and whatever, I would have quite a few things to build a merfolk deck. Because yeah. here we have another Herald of the Secret Streams. And uh, again, creatures with a 1-1 one, one counter can't be blocked. I will happily splash green to get that effect uh, if I was going and trying to do Merfolk as a standard uh, yeah. a standard deck It's travel. cool, though, because Merfolk previously were, like, blue with a splash of white because yeah. Lorwyn had some white ones. And then now with Ixalan, it's saying, hey, you know, Merfolks are still 90% blue, but maybe a little bit of green, too. And I personally think of them as the Elves of the Sea, so that oh, makes yeah, total yeah. sense that, that they sense. that they would be having green as a part of their, uh, of their lineage. Now, here I have... Tilonali's Skin Shifter. Zero one haste when it attacks, it can become a copy of another attacking creature. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Uh, here we have just a nice foil. I love it when they've got the dead foil and then the silhouette uh, on top of that. Oh, it's yeah. just a flying little creature dinosaur, but at a prohibitive mana cost. And here we have a uh, rampaging Ferocidon. It's got menace because it's ferocious and uh, players can't gain life. So boo for me. Uh, whenever another creature enters the battlefield, rampaging uh, Ferocidon deals one damage to that creature's controller. So nibble like at it. your shins, as it were. Those are those types of cards are always nice when you know they say, okay, you can't gain life, so that the red deck doesn't just auto lose to some white decks. Yeah. And then on top of that, you know, dealing a little bit of extra damage it reminds me of like. Sulfuric Vortex or Eidolon of the Great Level, that sort yep. of thing. Yep, yep. I have Bishop of Rebirth. So this is five for a three, four Vigilance. When it attacks, you may return target creature with casting cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So not bad, and it's a vampire. And EB already introduced this Ruin Raider. Uh, so he's got the ability of Raid. Very nice, very nice indeed. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's cool they brought Raid back. So Raid was from Cons of Tarkir block originally. I think it was. Yeah, and it seems like, especially since they have a bunch of pirates in the set, Raid just, you know, thematically makes a lot of sense. Not dollars, but cents. Dollars and cents. Well, I have a Shadowed Caravel. What is this? It's an artifact vehicle. Whenever a creature you control explores, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Oh, it's a two for a two-two with crew two. 
That seems like something that my, my merfolk would be interested in if they wanted to have counter based stuff. But here we've got again Vraska, just in her thing. Uh, for the first time in her life, Vraska tried to prevent a death. She's normally the one causing them. Return target <laughs> non land permanent. Uh, you don't control to its owner's hand, and if its converted mana cost was two or less, you get to scry two. Eh, about that. But uh, I've also got a Takatil. Uh, oh, yeah. Honor Guard. So creatures entering the battlefield again don't cause abilities to trigger. So uh, a little again, that hate bear. Yeah, things like that a lot of the time will find their way into decks basically because of the fact that they have, they're so cheap and they have a very relevant effect. Some decks, if you stop them from having triggered abilities, it basically stops the deck from working. All so, right. Oh, I have a Blood Crazed Paladin. One in a black, flash, one, one. When it comes into play, put a plus one, plus one counter on it for each other creature that died this turn. And I've got that repeating barrage. Repeating once again, the barrage. The barrage. The barrage. Berserker barrage. I've got one more pack left. Is that your last one? Last pack. Chuckas. All right. I think I think we pretty much well uh, already know who got the value box here. <laughs> I haven't opened a single planeswalker either. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of where I was uh, heading for with that. And I've got my last foil. Oh, look at that. Foil, 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 foil. Started with a foil, end with a foil. Oh, they heard me. I got a juice. Ah, <laughs> all right. It was like, okay, you get the, you get the one. I get the one at You least. get the one and that's it. All right, what so. What do you have here? I have, once again, a multicolored blowing up and up in the oh, yeah. factory grazing whip tail. You know, the cool thing is with the dinosaurs in the set, they really went for the kind of colorful yep. feathered look, which is, you know, kind of newer theory about the way dinosaurs look. Yep, yep. And I would say is uh, a really nice uh, nod to the biology uh, mm -hmm. there. And then I've got a Fathom Fleet Captain as my last one here. Oh, yeah. Just a menace, black dude with the, uh, whenever he attacks, you control another non-token pirate, you may pay two, and if you do, you get to create another black pirate with menace. Two, two. Nice. Yeah, really definitely pushing the, uh, the, the pirate, you know, theme in the set, which is good. And, uh... Well, unfortunately, I didn't see the, uh, I didn't see the card that I wanted out of my box, but I'm happy you pulled it. What was that? That was Legion's Landing. Oh, Legion's Landing. I wanted to see that before. <laughs> Darn it. I really did, but as a, as a result, I'm just going to say that the pick out of my piles that I personally think is the most interesting card for me to be putzing around with is, of course, for my modern merfolk, Kapala, Warden of the Waves. Oh, that's yeah. my pick out of my box. That if I uh, if I was going to be doing anything with it, that's that's definitely the card that I would be most excited about. I guess out of my stuff, I really got a lot of dinosaur dudes. So I got like here. I'll move the Jace aside because he's nice. I got the Gishaf, I got the Ripjaw Raptor, I got, I think there was another one here that was interesting in the rares. Oh yeah, the Verdant Sun's Avatar. Again, all of this could go very well for a, a commander deck. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and I got the Regisaur Alpha. So really out of this box, if you were trying to make some kind of dinosaur deck, you would have had it. Now in terms of value, I don't know if a ton of these have a huge amount of value. I think this one does. This one has a bit. This one would as well because he's kind of like that commander style card. What I really would have liked to see is a Carnage Tyrant. That's another really good dinosaur. It has like Hexproof, Can't Be Countered, Trample, yep. all that other stuff. Yep. That one sounds really solid. Obviously, if I was going to be choosing the value card out of here, it would be Imitation Guy Cradle. Oh, yeah. It just, that was probably the most expensive card out of this entire thing. I got one too. There we go. <laughs> so I would definitely say that uh, even if you're not looking for value out of this box, there is a ton of fun to yeah. be had out of here. And if you're at all a casual player, or if even you're not, you're a standard player, a modern player, a commander player, you're going to find something in this Ixalan uh, set for you to go and be playing with. So highly recommend you de definitely check it out. We're going to have singles for sale on Friday. We're going to have product for sale on Friday. We've got our Magic Mountain set up. We hope to see you then. It'll be a very exciting time. Yeah, definitely check out Ixalan. For sure. This is Maya from 401 Games signing off. And this is EB. Take it easy. Have yourself a good one, eh?